Okay, up to now we've been looking at, uh, in, in terms of employee engagement, we've been looking at the worldwide, then we've been looking, focusing in a little bit more on uh, what the best do, then we've been looking at what the individual employees might need from you. I'd like to finish off this section with uh, what comes from me, the things that I believe really make a difference. Uh, and there are three things I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, it's about engaging the right people, uh, recruiting the right people. Secondly, it's about developing people. And thirdly, it's about promoting uh, people from within. So engaging the right people, how do you do that? Well, traditionally what happens is that uh, we look for somebody to fill a particular set of skills to, to deliver reliably um, the kinds of functions that we're looking for. So we look at what people have done in the past. Do they have a track record of being able to uh, to to provide this function, use this skill? Do they have the knowledge? Have they had the training? Um, and it's looking backwards. In my experience, that doesn't tell you a lot about uh, a number of things that are going to be critical to having a really engaged team member. Um, what I recommend is that uh, you identify three things um, that, that you are really looking for in the ideal employee. And this should apply to every kind of employee that joins your organization. Build, build a list with three columns. Firstly, what are the skills that you really need? Now, some of these skills may be technical skills, others may be interpersonal skills, maybe communication skills. The second category is knowledge. What do you really need people to know? And that may be, again, technical knowledge um, that will help them to fulfill their job. But there's going to be gaps there because they're joining a new organization, yours, and they don't know everything they need to know. They don't know the people. They don't know how to get uh, access to resources, how to make things happen. So there are going to be some gaps. The third column is about the personal qualities that would really uh, be valued in your organization. Are you looking for team players? Or are you looking for people that can be focused on one job but uh, with it, without getting distracted by anything else? Are you looking for people with a positive attitude every day no matter what? Or frankly, is that just annoying and you want people with a more realistic frame of mind? Uh, do you want people that think logically or creatively? Do you want people that have fun or that are serious? And so on. Uh, every organization is different and here I really want you to be thinking about and I've done this with a number of different organizations at different levels um, really brainstorm on these things and pick out the critical ones um, you can then use that uh, to be uh, to in your selection processes uh, you can come up with a variety of different ways without just looking at what people have done in the past to work out whether they have, in particular, these personal qualities like positive attitudes, um, positive attitudes to problems. Uh, do they have self-confidence, the kind of confidence that you're looking for? Or is it too much? Are they arrogant? Uh, you want a bit of self-doubt in people. It's your job to define those things. But uh, that would be a far better template for you to be working out the kind of employee that would be a great member of your team not just somebody that can come and fulfill a function. So re recruit the right people is my message number one. Secondly, develop everybody in the team against that framework. Everybody is going to be short of the ideal. Nobody is 100% skillful in every area that you're looking for. Nobody knows everything they need to know. And nobody is 100% when it comes to personality and character and attitudes. We all have bad days. So all of us from top to bottom should have a professional development plan, which takes account of what the company needs them to develop, and it takes account of their own aspirations at the same time, so that we work in partnership uh, towards a common goal of uh, developing the person in relevant ways, efficiently, without wasting a lot of resources, sending people on courses that they're frankly not interested in, and it's not going to change anything. And my third tip, promote from within, wherever possible. Once you've found these people, um, it doesn't matter what their background experience is, it doesn't matter what their background level of education is, it doesn't matter what their skill sets are when they start. If you've got the right people and they are fully engaged, 
and they care and they really want to make a difference, they are able to learn and they are doing everything they can to learn things, promote them from within, take every opportunity to keep those people moving forward in your organization. Uh, because that will continue to build. It's much, it saves you a lot of recruitment costs as well. Uh, not just finding people, but finding they're the wrong people and having to get rid of them again. So promote from within, from wherever possible, once you have the first two things right. So recruit the right people, develop your people against that template, uh, and promote from within as a result. Uh, doing these things, you're going to end up with, it takes time, it takes perseverance, but you're going to end up with an, uh, an incredibly committed, loyal and engaged uh, team of people uh, that will want to stick together because they may get paid more somewhere else, but they're going to hate it. Uh, they're going to want to stay uh, part of the organization. That's your challenge. Over to you.